Hi, I'm Sarah Fry. Welcome to Patent Pod. Today we are on location at Helix, an annual conference all about celebrating high expectations for students with low incidence disabilities. Throughout the day, I've had the pleasure of speaking to a variety of attendees and speakers about their experience here at Helix. And right now, I've got an amazing tag team duo. duo. I'd love it if you could introduce yourself and tell us where you're coming from and what your role is there. My name is Kathleen Meese, coming from Ben Salem School District in Bucks County. I teach English as a second, ugh, English as a second language with, and we co-teach a class with Becky. Yeah. So I'm Rebecca Shellac uh, from Ben Salem High School, and I teach life skills, reading strategies, functional language arts, and Kathleen, Kathleen and I uh, co-teach with the reading strategies group. So we have a lot of English language learners who also have uh, cognitive disability in addition to speech and language impairment and the gamut. So, so you all are here as, as part of a, a whole little Ben Salem team. Yep. Um, as, we, uh, as I've learned throughout the day, Helix has this really unique program, the Stipend Project, to, to enable that on-site collaboration as part of the conference. And I'm wondering what that's been like for you all. Wrapping up this uh, multi-day experience, what, uh, since you all do co-teach, you see each other, but how has that um, been out of the classroom and here at this, uh, this conference been benefited you all in your, your relationship? It's been a nice change of pace to get out and to learn different things. And it's been really eye-opening for me because I've learned how many things intertwine. I teach level one English language learners, so like the new kids who come here without anything. And there were a lot of things that I was surprised that I could use in my classroom and things that really overlap with things that I already do. So being able to think about think along those lines, but also apply it to what we do and right. think about how we can change things to challenge them more. It's been really eye-opening and refreshing. I think um, just thinking, uh, we've just seen a lot of different um, really good presenters, but just I think one of the themes was like barriers, right? Like the kid isn't the barrier. It's, you know, whatever it, the instruction or the setting or the environment. And so just trying to relay, relay that to maybe the gen ed teachers or um, that's just something that has really resonated with me. Uh, I, I, I appreciate that so much. We, we talk a lot um, within episodes of our, of our podcast about we're not in education to fix our students right. or our right. children, right? Yeah. We want to identify those issues in the learning environment right. or the instruction to really, and I love the fact that you called attention to, to challenging them, right? to, to yeah. really um, recognize their assets and their skills and, right. and push them to, to grow. That yeah. is so cool. Yeah. Can you give, paint us a little picture? Um, because I know it, it, Helix is different. And for mm -hmm. folks that maybe have never been to Helix, but have been to other educational conferences or professional learning, what sets it apart in your mind? A lot of the variety of mm. what's offered in the sessions and I, like as a general ed teacher, I was surprised at how many things I could still find mm. that were available, things that weren't just for specific impairments, but mm -hmm. also for everyone. So I think that was one of the best things for me is just the variety of mm -hmm. it and the pace of it. It made it really enjoyable for me. Um, I think for me, this is my first conference really in general. And so, um, but we have PD days at our district and um, I, I feel like this is kind of the first place where it's like you feel like this is what we do. And so it's geared towards us. So it kind of like you're all kind of on the same page, if that makes sense. Like where sometimes like PD days are kind of like, meh. You know, there's this that you have to do or this that you have to do that applies to all teachers, but this is more specific to our kids. And it just, it makes like, it makes you kind of feel good, I guess. I don't know if that's a... Yeah. Well, and one thing we were saying, um, especially yesterday, was like, you know, you come in thinking of all these things mm -hmm. that might be totally new to you, you've <clears> never <throat> heard them before. And there were a lot of things we were like, oh, well, yeah. this is like a piece of what we're already doing. Right. Or like right. we do know some things that are good and we are already doing that, not necessarily right. working from the ground up. So it's kind right. of like a, a really positive feeling, yeah. a little like bit of a boost. Yeah, yeah a, a yeah. boost into what we already do and how we can make it better. Right. 
That's, I, I do want to call back. I think it's interesting. When you responded, you mentioned how, oh, there are things that are like applicable to all of my students. Mm -hmm. And then you took it on the flip side. You're like, this is very specific to, to right. me. So running that, that gamut mm -hmm. um, and offering that, the, both of those perspectives, both of those opportunities, yep. literally in the same setting, I think is very unique, where yeah. it can be uh, specialized uh, right. learning and supports, but generalizable, or we talk about universal design to where, right. oh, I, yeah, this would work in this other classroom or for right. these other students. That's really neat. I, I, that's just a cool balance of your, your yeah. professional relationship. You build off of each other yeah. there. As you return back to Ben Salem after this event, what is something that's going to stick with you? Um, a new idea or a feeling? What are you taking away from Helix? For me, the biggest thing is that there are so many things that overlap that I didn't mm -hmm. realize mm -hmm. because our district is so diverse in so many ways. And a lot of the things that we talk about for our special ed students mm -hmm. and for our ELLs don't have to be different accommodations that right. teachers are doing in classrooms. We can show them how certain strategies can work for everyone. Right. And especially for what I do with ESL, like the, the Rise and Strive stuff and the story of self, mm is stuff that I plan on implementing within this year because it just felt like it was speaking to mm. me and what my kids have to say and stuff. So I really feel like I'm walking away with, with great ideas. Yeah. I think, um, and I know I said this initially, but like I think for some reason the word, like the barrier part just stuck with me. Um, and just like, because I think sometimes even though we've come so far in special ed, right, there's still some um, teachers or just whomever staff that just don't um, value the student, I guess. Like, I remember the keynote speaker was saying about honoring the student, and so that just really resonated with me because you want to honor the students and their, that they have worth, you know, regardless of disability or whatever else. So just thinking about that, you know, and just taking that back to more of the, maybe the staff as a whole. Yeah. yeah. Well, I really appreciate the, the few minutes that you've, kind of snuck away from the exciting yeah. uh, multitude of offerings this week. Um, thank you so much for speaking with me. And to our audience, uh, if you'd like to learn more about Helix, uh, the conference, but also the multitude of resources and supports available to support students with low incidence disabilities, English learners, mm -hmm. all of those ideas uh, and topics are available through the PAD website, which is always linked in our show, our show notes. To our producer, John Ragsdale, thanks as always for making this happen. And to our audience, come back and see us at Patent Pod very soon.